lot of times people forget about the ones that paved the way. But when you talk about the NBA and slam dunking, then you got to mention Dominique name because he's a true. Dominique Wilkins joining us here. And uh, it's a big week for him, as I mentioned, Thursday night. After uh, 21 years, Dink, after you scored your last points for the Hawks. Let's introduce that forward from the University of Georgia, six foot eight, the human highlight film, the greatest Atlanta Hawk of all time, number 21, Dominique Wilkins. Thank you very much. You guys really don't know how much this means to me uh, to be back here. Getting my jersey retired. On Friday, it'll be open to the public. Uh, you're going to get a, a 3D tribute. Outside goes after it. Whoa! Uh -oh, here comes the trouble. And you know what this means. Dominique was the main attraction in Little Washington, leading the team to back-to-back -back titles, two undefeated seasons. You can say he kind of jumped out, <laughs> jumped out at you because, uh, you know, what, what an explosive believer he was. Dominique landed in Athens, Georgia, with Coach Hugh Durham's Bulldogs. side of the basket which shielded off Bowie. Jay Banks feeds it off and they go to Wilkins out high. Wilkins, well, that's, that might be low for him. And Kentucky. Wilkins, look at this man play basketball. Fingertip now, roll. Surprisingly, there's indecision on Kentucky when Georgia holds the ball out and all of a sudden starts to penetrate. Now up by just two is their leading scorer. Dominique Wilkins oh. gives him a four-point lead. Big hit, Dominique. Whoop, and Fly up. Oh, oh. Hey. Dominique Wilkins. 25. Nice call, Coach Durham. Right. Here's Wilkins. He wants to put it up. And he does. Look at that. That's his fingers do the talking again. As Dominic Wilkins has now scored 28. Here's Terry Fair turning around. Oh! oh. 
what a play. He, he touched the ball while the ball was on the rim. It really should have been no basket, but it was an incredible, incredible tap-in. I don't know if he did touch it on the rim, Billy. It looks like he caught it after it came off. He caught it from the bottom. He may have. It was right, look to me. It was in contact with the rim. You might be, it might have been a little low. Here it comes. Right here. Thanks for the replay. Great shot by Fair. Now watch it. See, it's off the rim. Whoa. <laughs> Cookie picks it off, he'll go under wide open, score. The stop by Dominique. Dominique averaged more than 20 points a game, but it was the way he scored, like a live wire. It seems strange that a, a ball player your caliber would go down to Georgia that didn't have tradition, they're known for football. Right, that's true. I just wanted to go to a school to help build a tradition. Dominique led the Dogs to 19 wins and a spot in the National Invitational Tournament. He considered turning pro after only one complete college season. A surprising move for the times. When you say Georgia, you gotta say Dominique. He put the Georgia program on the map in the midst of a football crazy era. I wanted to go to a school where I build my own name and by going to Georgia, there was no one to compare it to. Some schools were saying, well, you can come here and, 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 you know, and you'll be another this person. And we were saying, if you come to Georgia, you can be Dominique. It was important because I wanted to help build a program. And by going there, we had a chance to build something. And we, and we did. We didn't have too much, but we did have the dunks. But everybody knew what Dominique's dunks were going to be. There with the pass to Wilkins. And oh! He's the only individual I knew who can do some of the dunks that he was doing, I'll tell you that. Dominique's dunks are strong, they're powerful, and they are amazing, simply amazing. When he said human highlight film, that was the perfect name for Dominique. You know, when he dunks, he, it looks like he has a lot of anger built up. You're not more so looking at the look of it, it's the sound and the power that he, you know, he released it with. They were pretty aggressive. They're pretty ferocious because, you know, the thing that I wanted to do with guys trying to block my shot, I wanted to throw it down as hard as I could so it would deter them the next time. You might block many shots, but it's one shot you would never block, and that's his. You know, I was always an emotional player, so my, my whole thing was finishing at the rim. It's just the way I play it. I play with a level of intensity that it's kind of embedded in me. It's just who I am. He was unbelievable. And I don't think anyone that height could, could actually leap from a standstill position any higher than he could. And you could be playing a slow, half-court style of play, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, wham! You know, so what just happened? Dominique again. The traditional doctors usually take off from a distance of one, you know, from a long distance, but it's one leg. Nick, most of his dogs, if you look at them, are coming off both legs. Made his dogs more interesting and more harder to do. You think about how high he had to bounce the ball just to get through traffic, to get it to, uh, to the rack, it was incredible. The degree of difficulty of a lot of dunks I did in college uh, and traffic, um, it, it kind of surprised people because they've never seen that before. You're always looking to get a player who, who is going to catch the imagination of, of uh, your fans. And we had other good players to go along with Dominic, but nobody had the impact that Dominic had. Kids want to be the next Dominic. The teenagers, the, the young kids, they really do. Everybody wants to be able to, to fly like he flies, and stay in the air like he stay in the air, and have the career that he had. I mean, yes, I would, I would love to be double. I am not a comparison. I am unique. I am creative. I am competitive. I am a dunker. I am Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins, University of Georgia. Drafted in 1982, Dominique brought his high wire act to the NBA joining the Atlanta Hawks and quickly became one of the league's most explosive scorers. As he burst into the NBA in 1982, Dominique Wilkins had a flair all his own, and he created a wave of excitement even before he had played his first game. Dominique Wilkins. Dominique, you hear that roar that went up when they uh, saw one of your dunks. You ready to do that this year in the NBA? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get there and do well. Uh, hopefully I get there and uh, 
have a good season. I'm just really concerned about getting there playing ball right now. Dominique came in, and here comes this young, energetic, high flyer out of the University of Georgia. Utah Jazz. Choose Dominique. He was almost the man in Salt Lake City. Utah took him with the third overall pick in 1982. But Ted Turner saw a potential gold mine in the former Georgia star. The media mogul gave the Jazz a million dollars in two proven players, including veteran John Drew, for the rookie. John Drew was one of the eldest statesmen of the team. To get win of, you know, John Drew getting traded for a rookie, you know, it almost blew us out of, off our feet. The rookie made the deal seem like a steal. I think everybody in the organization felt that this was the cornerstone, the future of the Atlanta Hawks. He was fun to watch, type of guy, bring, bring players out of the seat, played hard, competed hard. First two minutes of the game, he was sweating more than anybody else on the court because the, uh, the energy that he was bringing was there. He wanted to be the best when they brought up Michael's name and all the other great players' name. And when we played them, he would say in the locker room, they may be great, but not tonight. You know, not tonight. I'll be the one. He was the first guy that made you watch TNT, that made you watch SportsCenter to see what he did. There goes Dominique. Got That's why it's called the human highlight film. He had the perfect nickname. You know, a lot of guys have good nicknames, but Dominique had the perfect nickname because that's what he was. I mean, he was the human highlight film. He's looking. Looking. You know, slip and slide through people. So they said to roll the film back and keep seeing what I was doing, and they still couldn't figure it out. So that's how I got to me. could fly, but he could dunk with power and finesse. And that was hard to do. But where he was dangerous was on that wing. Woo! Wilkins the other way! Brown field, right side, stops for the jumper, rebound, jammed in by Dominique. Showtime for the rookie! This kid is gonna be something. It was a scout report on me and said, look, do not let Dominique get a dunk. He get a dunk, he gets off. He's the first person that would make you go home and put your VCR because he was the guy that you would say, he's gonna do something that you hadn't seen. They find Wilkins, look out. Dominique was the first guy I remember to routinely come in off of camera frame and, and put in offensive rebounds. Hawks averaged just 7,400 people uh, the year prior to Dominique coming here. And in Dominique's fifth year, sixth year, they averaged 15,700 people a game. Those people came to watch Dominique Wilkins. Dominique is red hot. You've got to see him get your tickets now. You don't want to miss this young man. Dominique continued to soar into the spotlight, establishing himself as one of the NBA's marquee players. He was also the cornerstone of an up-and-coming Atlanta Hawks team. You could start to see what was building, what was developing, and they were growing, and they played with more confidence. We were a team. We truly were a team. We had pieces. Price off the pick, had it knocked away. Atlanta will get a break. It's a three-on-one, Dominique. Behind his back to Willis. Each year he was in the league, his game elevated to a different level. He got better at the skills of basketball, passing the ball, dribbling the ball, shooting the ball. I think it's a tremendous credit to him working at it and improving at his overall game. Wilkins was somewhat of a gunner, averaging over 20 field goal attempts per game for his career. But with a career shooting percentage over 46%, can you blame him? He's 12th all-time in total points, 14th in points per game for the regular season and the playoffs, and 5th among small forwards and rebounds per game. He had two seasons where he averaged over 30 points a game and just barely missed that mark in two other seasons. 
Dominique was Mr. Excitement when it came to the NBA. This guy will do something that makes you just fall out of your seat. Yeah, it was a pleasure to watch. Best with great ability and the heart to go along with it. Dominique had that package. Spun with the alley-oop to Nico. Oh, oh, oh. Just nice throw it up there. He was spectacular. I mean, just spectacular. Uh, the dunks, the explosions to the basket. Good night. He's just like thunder, like boom. Dominique ahead of the field. Dominique reached his biggest audience that year at the second annual slam dunk competition. Dominique Wilkins. Thank you so much for being here. Hall of Famer, nine-time All-Star, two-time dunk champion with us on behalf of the Verizon Slam Dunk Contest. Thank you make it, for making time for us Actually, four-time. I just got credit for two. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. Dominique, on that note, I want to start there. It's uh, today's MJ's 54th birthday, and for some of our younger audience, can you tell us about that showdown at 88 in the dunk contest? Welcome to the Windy City, Chicago, the home of the Bulls and Michael Air Jordan, a city steeped in sports history and the host for this year's All-Star Saturday. Oh, that was, that was fabulous. It was in Chicago Stadium. No stadium like it. When that place got noisy, you could feel the whole building shake. And, and Michael had the building shaking on that Saturday. I broadcast the All-Star Saturday that weekend with uh, the slam dunk competition uh, and the three-point with uh, Rick Barry and with Snapper Jones. Chicago was the perfect setting for it. There was a whole bunch of hype surrounding the entire event, and it was like being at some kind of big uh, party. Also, that was the day that Bird uh, didn't take his warm-up off, hit the three-point shot, held his finger up that he had won it before the shot even went in. So an amazing, uh, amazing day there for the NBA. Chicago. Well, they're on their feet in Chicago for this man, their man, the defending champion. Jordan, this is what the judges are going to have to deal with this afternoon. Everybody expects a 10 from Michael Jordan. Chicago's Jordan's town, you know, so, uh, yeah, you got a disadvantage going in because, you know, he's he's like God there in, in that city, so, but that's what makes it fun. You know, that's what makes it interesting. Well, I show up that day and we look, we see that the judges are loaded with Chicago people. Chicago's pretty dang famous for being able to swing elections, and so I thought, Dominique Wilkins will have to so totally dominate this, and Jordan will have to make mistakes in order for Jordan not to win. Dominique versus Michael Jordan would never ever be top because they will go on dunk for dunk. <laughs> From high above the rim. Again, he makes it look like it's routine, but watch, look how far away he is. That's a great start. For Dominique. There he is from the top of the key. The perfect toss, the perfect timing, and look at him. He stay up, up, and throws it through with power. And the perfect score of 50 on that dunk from Dominique Wilkins, now the defending champion. <laughs> well, we're still even as Jordan goes up and takes it way down. Dominique Wilkins. So that's the second 50 of the day for Michael Jordan, but remember the the scores from previous rounds don't advance. This is the championship. Dominique Wilkins and Michael Jordan. That even has the Chicago fans humming because the power that Dominique has. He has more power than any dunker that I've seen play this game with the creativity also going along with it. Harry comes up in the air. Look at the legs. Look at the arms. The windmill and power. There is a dunk off in case there's a tie. A sudden dunk. Looked like a figure eight with the double clutch. A 47 was awarded on that dunk. There's another look at that dunk. Now watch when he takes off. Look at the way he moves the ball from the right down low to the left. Two hands and throws it through with authority. We watched Dominique Wilkins come in and again with a power and authority low with two hands. And the judges have awarded Dominique Wilkins a 45. That's incredible. <laughs> Could we call it a make good? I mean, that's a two-hand windmill with authority from the sideline. Let's watch this one again. Here he comes, takes off, two hands up. 
down, around, and through with two hands. And he took off further inside than he did the last time, but it's still a spectacular dunk and certainly deserving of the high score that he received, Steve. But Dominique Wilkins got the short end of a very impressive dunk. There will never be dunk contests like that again. They gave him a 50 from high above the rim. You were a legend when it comes to slam dunk competitions. What was your take on what you saw Blake Griffin do jumping over a car and why didn't you ever do something like that? <laughs> That's too easy. Their creativity was off the chart. You didn't see one dunk like the other. From high above the rim. Michael would come through his legs, bam. He would glide in from the side with the ball back here, bam. Michael said, oh, I got one better. I'm going to kick my legs out. Bam! Every dunk was a, to me, it was 100. You know, Dominique just up there trying to break the backboard. Every dunk was just hard and monstrous. Jordan with the finesse flow from the foul line. The greatest dunk contest ever. Um, when the competition got going in that final round, they both got 50s on their first dunks. And I thought, something's got to happen here. Judges have awarded Dominique Wilkins a 45. That's incredible. Because I tried to, to capitalize off of every dunk that I attempted. I said, if this dunk is good, I got to make the next dunk great. And I felt like my last dunk was my best dunk by far. But my score didn't reflect that. So. He needs a 48 to tie, a 49 to win. The defending slam dunk champion, Michael Jordan. Well, yeah, Michael, he understands the moment. He walked down, he took his time, he let everyone rise out of the seat, he let the fans put the, the signals up, he built a moment. He built a moment that we never forget. I saw you walk around, look up in the stands, you looked at our announcers, what were you thinking? I, mean, I was searching, trying to find something, trying to find something to, to give me a, an idea of what to do. I didn't know what to do, then all of a sudden, I found the guy who started it all. Dr. J was sitting over there, he was looking at me, and he pointed, like going back, Go to the, and do the free throw line. Michael is backing all the way to the middle of the backcourt. Now he's going to the baseline. Now we will wait for the judges. A 48 ties, a 49 wins. It was Michael's weekend in Chicago, starting with a slam dunk and then going into being the MVP uh, in the All-Star game the next day. Michael Jordan won the dunk contest. Dominique was a very hairline, fracture, close, second. But I truly believe in my heart, Dominique Wilkins, that was the second time he got robbed in a slam dunk contest. He was furious about it. And, you know, it's funny, um, we were flying back, going back. I said, you know, there was no way you were going to win that dunk contest in Chicago. And you have to understand that. And it's tough when you know, your mic, your mic in Chicago, you jump from the free throw line twice. But I think anywhere else, Dominique might have won. Dominique versus Michael in a dunk contest was like Hagler Hearns, Tyson Holyfield, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. It's a heavyweight fight. This is what everybody was building up for. All Star Sunday took a back seat to All Star Saturday. And it was the first time that that probably ever, ever happened. That was a culmination of showmanship. Man, wow. Probably the greatest dunk contest ever. I'm a little biased, you know, because of Mike and myself. But, you know, the thing at the end of the day, no matter who won, the fans got their money's worth. And that's what we were all about, is, is putting on a show. You know, I always wondered, does it grate you at all that, that you didn't get the edge in that? Cause I actually I actually thought a legitimate argument could have been made that you won that contest. I think most did, people feel that way. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about it? Probably one. <laughs> he just told you he has four. Probably one. I got you. Now, what was your objection that, that Mike did the dunk from the free throw line twice? Well, actually, it wasn't that. It's that I saved my best dunk for last. Mm -hmm. 
and I got a 50 on a previous one that wasn't my best one. And so, again, save the best one for last. I got 47. I looked up. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> it ain't going to work out too good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. You bring up the fact that back in the day, old school, loved going at it. Y'all wanted to put on the show, etc. But, you know, the thing that was different, the passion and the level of passion that we brought to every one of these contests. Oh, as a player, period, we love to compete against one another, and that was, we were, that was what we were all about. We were all about seeing who was the best. We wanted to know who the best was. And it was the best players in the world who could dunk competing against the best players in the world who can dunk. Michael Jordan, you know, it's hard, like, again, I hate comparison. Michael Jordan is, is another atmosphere. These two guys met one another, that they didn't know that there was a contest within the contest, because both of those guys are so highly competitive that they knew who the opponent was that they were playing against on any given night that they played. We played uh, Chicago, you, you know, it was going to be a shootout. Or, or, uh, we got down about two minutes, we up like maybe five or something. Jordan got about 45, Neek got about 42, and he go, well, I need five more points. But that's the way Neek made such a competitor. He wanted not only beat Jordan, he wanted to outscore him. It was always a battle. You know, so we pushed each other to the limit. When we competed, it was like showtime. Well, they were fighting for scoring titles, they were fighting all the highlights every night, and they finally had the big battle in the slam dunk contest test in 85, which Nick had won, and now in 88, they're going at it again, and they were probably the two most exciting individual players at the time. Unfortunately for Dominique, it was in Chicago. Dominique was power, and, and Jordan was more finesse. You know, Jordan will fly through the air and Dominique will try to tear the air down. You participated in five dunk contests. You beat the great Michael Jordan head-to-head -head fair and square. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to LeBron James, the best player in pro basketball, who has yet to participate in a single dunk contest. You, you were five now, and he's still zero. It, do, what, what are your, your emotions and thoughts about that? I would love to see him do it. I really would. I think the whole world would love to see LeBron get it. But I think... This is the, the problem, I think, with the dunk contest now, that guys now don't get into dunk contests because I don't really know if they really enjoy competing against one another. You know, and because maybe they have so many other distractions, what have you, but he's probably going to go down with one of the greatest athletes that never do the dunk contest. How much is the fact that you guys all participated back then, the fact that the dunk contest was helping you establish your brands. Like, I remember the first dunk contest with you and, and Michael Jordan, and Dr. J was still the kind of branded dunker, mm -hmm. and that contest elevated you guys and finally got the world past Dr. J and on to you guys. How much of it is because they have these multi-million dollar brands now already? I, I think, if you look at what Michael and I did, 25, 26 years later, they're still talking about it. So it wasn't really about the slam dunk contest itself. It was about the individuals who got in it and the greats wanted to know who the best was. Michael and I wanted to know who the best was, period. And, well, and it wasn't going to screw with your legacy at all. It's not something that's going to interfere with that. It's just something we did for the weekend for the fans. Do you think the NBA was more talented when you played, when Jordan played, the Magic, than today? They're more physical and they're more athletic, but you guys have more skills? Is that a trick question? No. Uh... <laughs> Your relationships with guys like Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, and the guys that you competed against, because people are curious. They wonder what that relationship is now after all those years well, of competing. Well, first of all, let me tell you, Dave, you'll never see basketball like that again. I mean, that era of just star after star after star on every team. There was no nights off. I never had a night off. I remember my first eight games. Larry Bird. Dr. J, Bernard King, Larry Nance, English, Dantley, Worthy, Mark Aguirre, and <laughs> Orlando Warriors were actually the first nine games. I mean, you had no night, and all them guys getting 25 plus. And so if you didn't mentally prepare yourself to play against guys like that, you got embarrassed, period. And that was a, that was a bump and grind area of the very physical, and guys were very skilled. And you look at the small forward position back then, all them guys were 6'9, six, 6'10, six, playing small forward. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what else you want me to tell you? <laughs> you know? 1985 and 1990 slam dunk champion and NBA Hall of Famer Dominique Wilkins. But unfortunately, the time we had to chat was like the length of his shorts in that 85 dunk contest, super short. So I had to make every second count. We walked over, and I don't normally have this impression on people, but as soon as he saw me, Mr. Wilkins removed his shirt almost immediately. All right, go ahead, shoot. 
But like a Susie Culber or Aaron Andrews would have done, I steadied myself and continued going after my story. How, uh, how's your half court shot looking? Are you ready for Saturday night? Yeah, my shoulder is sore as hell. <laughs> okay, I've been at practice two days ago and I want to win this year. But then, oh my goodness, Dominique started getting handsy with me. This must have been exactly what Mullet Boy felt like when he was felt by Jordan. This was awesome. I mean, this was the hand that threw down killer dunk after killer dunk, and now he was touching me. But still, I didn't want Dominique to get too familiar with me, so I did what? I made fun of an NBA great's glasses. Horace Grant there with the specs? Come on. Uh, <laughs> Easy. Not my finest professional moment, but I kept my cool and tried to steer it back to talking about his Atlanta Hawks. Just like that, it was over. We didn't have great individual uh, superstars. The thing that put us on the map was our consistent hard play. We played hard all the time. Wow, how about the effort of the Hawks? How about the second opportunities? Everybody playing very well together. Rivers the other way. Dominique and bang. Dominique suddenly stepped to the fore as the young leader of this team. A guy who you could give the ball to to get a score when you needed it. Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins. Stolen right back by Dominique. And take your cameras out and get a shot of that one. Principally because of Dominique. We had an ad campaign uh, the second half of the 80s. We were called Atlanta's Air Force. That was kind of our persona. And we had a great time with it. The Hawks were flying high, and Dominique was the
think you can do for this team? And he said, I think I can score more and help us win more basketball games. Nice pass inside. on to win 57 games and he wound up leading the NBA in scoring over 30 points per game so I think he pretty much called the shot. Got his own rebound again. Yeah. The man is possessed. The Hawks would win the Atlantic Division and cruise through the first round of the playoffs. He determined to lift his team to the top of the NBA. I knew we had a chance to win in this league, you know, on, on, the, on the grand scale. Unfortunately, the East was loaded. <laughs> Atlanta became a perennial playoff team. But during the 80s, they faced two enormous roadblocks in the Eastern Conference, the Detroit Pistons and the Boston Celtics. Atlanta would have to play the defending champion, Boston Celtics, to move on. Willis the rebound ahead to Dominique. He's got battle with him. He takes it himself. Wilkins. Wilkins beats everybody back. Let's take a look at Dominique along the baseline. <laughs> Dominique. They're trying to front them a, a certain way to the, the, the help. Well, the second quarter were entirely different. Good shot. Way short, but he got it back. Another offensive rebound. That's a man. Doc Rivers. Dominique Wilkins. Wilkins. Score it. Wilkins. Yes. Wilkins in the quarter. Great move, Wilkins. Oh, wow. Harris shoots the jumper. He can't throw it. The ocean tonight. Here comes Dominique. Almost lost. Battle again. Dominique. That's impossible, but he did it. And the foul. I believe. Yes. We're seeing it all tonight. He'll be doing that again at 535 Saturday in the Snap Dunkaroo. Harris. Oh. A break away for Dominic. Hello. And Dominic has all day and all court. And the team that wins this game will be the one that executes the half court offense the best. Oh. Here comes Dominic. He's got Willis, Battle, and Rivers with it. Doesn't need any of them. Wilkins. That's a pretty good guy to have with the ball. And he lets her rip. A rainbow. 45 for Wilkins. Oh, what a shot this is. You got to have confidence. You got to believe in this hip ticket. And he had to change his shot. Right. He doesn't normally shoot it that high, does he? Only in when it's necessary. Only when Kevin McHale's right in his face. Dominique. Oh, man. Bird against Wilkins, green steal. Two on one. Great pass by Rivers. Wilkins the best. 49. And it's based on his quickness. He's here. Now when Bird now he just steps right in there. Now not only does he use quickness, but knowing when to use the quickness and how to use it is a key on this play, and then he gets the layup. I think Larry thought that he'd been brushed off by the parish pit, right. but he fought through it. Rivers gave it right back to him. What a matchup. They go one on one. The zone is clear. Dominique. And a foul. What a shot. He's got 51 points. He had 14 at halftime. They weren't sure he was going to play because his back hurts. That's a good way to straighten your back out. That's it. There's that shot. Simplistic, but this is a very important free throw. Bird 4 3. No, it is. No, it will not count. It does not count. It doesn't matter. And Atlanta in overtime has a very big victory against a great, great basketball team. Final. Atlanta 126, the Celtics 123 in overtime. And we'll be back after that. Tonight's Miller Lite player of the game, Dominique Wilkins, 19 of 34 from the field, 16 of 20 from the foul line. He had 27 points at the end of three quarters. He wound up with 54. Looks like the Hawks want to run. They find Wilkins. Look out. 
I think that dunk in the was just mad until I just got burnt three or four times by Larry. <laughs> and that was probably was just a dunk out of anger. You know, I said, give me the ball in the wing, unless you got to get out of the way. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why Larry Bird jumped because it was Nick's rookie year. He didn't know better. And that was that would break your fingers. Like, you would have your fingers broke if you really put your hand out there. You know, because Nani's only dunked it. He cocked it behind his head. Larry Bird was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. No matter how big and strong a guy is, if somebody is coming at you full speed, they have a really huge advantage. And he went over Larry Bird, and Larry Bird just spun around like a top and sat down on the court, sat there and said, Man, I just saw something firsthand that's unbelievable. Boston Garden, May 1988. One of Dominique's greatest moments came in 1988 against Larry Bird and the Celtics when they battled down the stretch in Game 7 of their playoff series. It was just two champions going head to head. Two guys with, with incredible will to win. The Atlanta Hawks just will not surrender to the favorite Boston Celtics. It's kind of a clash of two worlds. In Bird, you've got somebody who's already an icon. He's already been uh, sanctified as a Boston Saint. And Dominique represents a different kind of basketball. The frenetic Hawks, led by the Freakazoid, had old school Boston by the throat. Up three games to two in the best of seven series. All Atlanta has to do is go down to Atlanta and close the series out. We blew the opportunity. Johnson, the bird, high arc, yes. Lost, I think, in the last 10 seconds of that game. Livingston, no. Boston has won the game. Number 21 would need a win in historic Boston Garden for a shot at the title. I never forget Zoe came in the locker room and said, We're going to win a bleep, bleep, bleep game. And if you're not going to fight, don't come up here. Game seven would go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominic was an unstoppable player. No guy could guard him in the league, went man for man. You could see his competitiveness. You could see his determination in that game seven. There was only one player on the floor who could match his will. End of the third, Kevin Willis came over to me and said, don't let this son of a gun score anymore. Bird's eyes got this big. <laughs> I looked at Kevin, what are you doing? <laughs> and from that point, it was, it was a shooting match. But you talk about Larry Bird, it's, 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 it's a few things, I won't say a lot of things about Larry Bird that made him great. One, he could pass, he could shoot, he could rebound, and he had a competitive nature off the charts and a basketball, a basketball IQ to go with it. He was fierce. Fierce. Six. Bird with a very difficult angle gets it to fall. He has put some life into the crowd, and Wilkins will try to quiet them, and he does. Bird gets it in with a slip pass to McHale. Wilkins from the perimeter. Bird looking to pass, then puts it on the parquet and finds McHale dropping back. That seemed to have that confidence that they displayed in the early moments. Bird is up with the shot. Here's Wilkins. Shots. Dominique responds. 
Bird forced out of the shot, gives it up to Whitman, and now races back defensively. And Whitman with a slick pass to Dominique Wilkins. Bird gets it in low on the turnaround against Wilkins. Willis gets it into Dominique's hands. He comes up with the shot, and he's fouled. Put him on the line. Quickly now to Rivers, who moves it to Wilkins. Bird now cuts free. Tied at 88. With Bird again pulling Bird, up. attempting to break free. Stays with it, and the foul is called. The continuation for Larry Bird. Once we're up by seven, Dominique hits a three. Lead to Bird off the fake. Improves his position, and the Celtics are up again. Wilkins ties it for Atlanta. Bird cuts free. Left hands it for the field goal. That puts Casey Jones and the Celtics back on top. 101 to 99. This is a type of game of who's going to blink first. Wilkins responds. And he has tied it at 101. 38 points for Wilkins. Let's do it. It's Bird's turn. And the Celtics have the lead. 103, 101. And both benches are enjoying what they're watching with these two teams. 13 points in this quarter. It's a duel. Put down your saber. And then gets it back. And Dominique high off the glass. 40 points for Wilkins, and the game is tied at 103. Bird snaps free. Comes up with a shot, and the Celtics lead it. Johnson's face. He is cut at the right eye as he comes out defensively. Now he goes into double team. And the duel continues. 42 for Wilkins, 30 for Bird. Johnson gets it into Bird, and Wilkins is there. Bird comes free. Bird for the layup. You are watching what greatness is all about. We began the broadcast by telling you about Larry Bird, who following the game six victory by the Celtics in Atlanta, guaranteed a win in number seven, saying the Hawks blew their chance by losing number six. Larry Bird started the game slowly, but here in the fourth period, he has shown you why he's a future Hall of Famer. 20 points this quarter. He is 9 of 10 in this period. He has hit his last six field goals. And as far as Larry Bird is concerned, it's Detroit. Here we come. seen anything like that. Play after play. It's a duel! Bird versus Wilkins. Game seven. Wilkins responds. Do or die. This is a type of game of who's going to blink first. Those two guys was like literally just going after each other. The consummate showman versus the quintessential team player. At 47 points, Dominique would take the one-on-one -on -one battle. You are watching what greatness is all about. 
Larry Legend would win the war. Oh, if you're an Atlanta Hawks fan, it must be hanging and you're watching in your living room right now. Uh -huh. The Boston Celtics win this series. We had a great opportunity, great opportunity to win. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. The defeat would define his game, perhaps unfairly, for the rest of his career. I wish more people in the coaching profession could have gotten to know what he's really about. You know, his reputation of not being a defender, or not being a rebounder, or not being a team guy. I mean, to me, that was completely ludicrous. To me, he was a winner. He had brought the Hawks within seconds of advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals. It was as close as they would ever get. Nothing can ever take away the memories of the game he played that day. He was the best player in the game to never win the big one. If there was not a Boston team there, how I many championship would Dominique have been able to win? The Hawks never did make it to the NBA Finals. And as the team leader, Dominique took the brunt of the criticism for their playoff failures. I think there were a lot of things that were said or people assumed about Dominique that were very incorrect. He's got a bad rap in some people's eyes of not winning and shooting too much. I had to carry that load. So when things was going good, I got the accolades. When things were going bad, I got the blame. So I didn't worry about the criticism because I knew, and I think my peers knew, what I brought to the table. Dominique really never had another great player to play next to him. He really never had that second guy uh, to take some of the slack. He was the show. But in 1992, the show came to an abrupt halt when Wilkins suffered a ruptured Achilles tendon. Somebody hit me or kicked me. I turned around and said, who kicked me? I turned around and no one was there. But he's in a lot of pain. Dominique nursing the ankle and I see him limping off. And I looked down at my foot. It was almost straight in the air. He'd torn his Achilles tendon. He was not only through for the season, it looked as though his career was in jeopardy. Certainly, it seemed he would never be the same player again. Dummy's a strong person, he'll be back. Charles, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Damn, man. Yeah, one thing, man. Unbelievable. There was no one near me. I just turned and just popped. You know, just... See, when they carried you off on the stretcher, I knew something was. I knew it was bad then. He was like, my career is over. And I was like, no, your career is not over. You're a healthy young man. You'll be able to come back stronger than ever. But after rehabilitating his injury, Neek returned the following season. Remarkably, he appeared as sensational as ever and had even added some new dimensions to his game. Oh, what a move by he got better at the skills of basketball, passing the ball, dribbling the ball, shooting the ball. He's so much smarter, his skills are so much better, and he's not trying to play a game based on athleticism and individuality anymore. Each year he was in the league, his game elevated to a different level. I think it's a tremendous credit to him working at it, understanding where his shortness, his weaknesses were, and improving at his overall game. But when is it when you're on that court, you make that move, you're like, oh, it doesn't hurt anymore, I can go all out now. You know, the thing is, you feel great mm -hmm. when you come back. But it's not until you get into competition where you get your first bump. I remember getting hit in the air and I came down and immediately grabbed my leg. I'm like, wait a minute, there's no pain. It was all in my head. But once I got over that, I said, you know what, I'm going full tilt. And whatever happens, happens, but I'm going to go out on my own terms. So I had to totally block it out of my mind. And once I blocked it out, it was, it was old Venice Dominique. I mean, I came back playing the game on the ground as well as in the air, came more fundamentally sound. So I had that explosiveness and the basketball skill to go with that. Check out these numbers right here. Pre-injury at the age of 32, he had played 100 in, uh, 810 games, over 30,000 minutes with an average of 26.2. Well, how about the return from Achilles season? 29.9. How do you go up almost four PPG after the Achilles injury? I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, really, I wanted to prove all the doubters wrong because when I tore my Achilles tendon at 32, I got these sarcastic pats on the back. Oh, okay, Nick. We hope anymore. you come back, you know. And, and I knew that they thought my career was over. But I work twice a day, every day for nine months. I mean, I work harder than anybody 
could work at getting back from an injury. So in doing that, I knew once I returned to the court that physically I was going to be ready to go. It was just a mental part where I had to get over. But once the physical part and I was, I was training, I was doing the things I used to do, mm -hmm. I said, not only am I going to come back and be pretty good, I'm going to be an all-star. Mm. And people looked at me like I was crazy. And I proved them all wrong. I averaged almost 30 points a game that year. That's what the great ones hey. do. Then you went back to dunking on people yeah, You know again. what? It, it made me, even though I had the skills as a basketball player, I even became more of that because I didn't just rely on playing the game above the rim. Even though I had the mid-range, the off-the-dribble, post-up, go to the line. <laughs> what else? A lot of people, and I tell people all the time, it's hard to score over 26,000 points on dunks. Right. You know, That's I right. had games where I scored 40 and didn't have but one or two dunks in the game. So when I tore my Achilles, that made me more of a grounded basketball player as well as a aerial acrobatic. When you look at the combination of things that he did, the things in the record book, all the block shots, all the steals, all the rebounds, you just don't see well-rounded players like that anymore. Dominique, to me, at that time, was like having a five-carat diamond ring. But years down the road, I realized he really was a ten-carat. Volkoff and the Hawks swinging it around for Dominique Wilkins to do a one-on-one -on -one move against his younger brother. Gerald with the good defense, but Dominique with the last move and the last word, and Gerald was whistled for a foul, and he doesn't like that, and he gets charged with a technical If it could end the way you think it should end, Dominique would win his championship, be named one of the 50 greatest players in the NBA, which he should be. He wasn't recognized as one of the top 50. To me, Dominique is one of the top 25. But who were you surprised wasn't on there? I mean, Dominique Wilkins. That um, was the first name that I thought when I looked at that list. Of, boy, Neek's Neek. not Neek's not on the top. That 50. was that was human that highlight was, reel. That was a, that was the first guy that, for me I too. Thought, because yeah. when you think of certain players, when you think of certain franchises, you think of certain players. Mm -hmm. And he, and when you say Atlanta Hawks, he's the only guy you think of. There's no one else that you could say, well, I think of this guy when I think of the Hawks. No, you think of Dominique Wilkins. So when you thought of the Celtics, you know, you would say Russell and Kuzi. Like, you have those names. When you think of the Pistons, you think of Isaiah. You know, you think of the 10 teams Shaq played with. You think of Shaq, all of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was for Chuck, man. Wait, wait, wait. He can fight his own battles. You know, what You got strike one, you got strike one. I dare, I dare you to get the strike three. There'll be some furniture moving over there, Ernie. I'm telling you now, Ernie. How about it, C? I definitely uh, thought Dominique on that list, like you guys said, when you just think about the Celtics, how great Larry Bird was. He was always, you know, breaking Dominique's heart. You know, you, you think about his impact in the league, and it was him. And just because you don't have help or just because you just can't get there doesn't make, you know, your value not that. And so I always thought Dominique was one of the best. I do agree with C. Webb. Would you put Scottie Pippen in front of Dominique? I would not put Scottie Pippen in front of well, Dominique. I, I wouldn't put Scottie Pippen in front of Neek or Bob McAdoo. This is Steve Holman, voice of the Hawks, and we're ready for this big three-point challenge that's taking place here at Phillips Arena that has been long anticipated. We've got two chains here. Two chains is going to be here at Phillips Arena on December 30th, performing at the game. And, of course, the greatest Atlanta Hawk of all time, the Hall of Famer, so Dominique Wilkins. If, if I lose, do I have to perform with him? No, I'm glad you asked that, because the loser of this contest today will be buying tickets to a future Hawks game for our fans that are here uh, courtside today. So we've got three racks of balls. The green ball will be worth two points. The other balls will be worth one. Now, Two Chains, you played in college, right? So you're, you're... Yeah, yeah, I played also at North Clayton High School. I'm a local here, College Park. Stand up. This for us, baby. Southside. Yes. All right, Collie Park, here we go. I was watching the Atlanta Hawks game, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying, yesterday. And, uh, you know, they had Dominique on there. You know, he, he be commentating sometime, you know. You know, on TV. So, Dominique, fresh off the screen. Fresh off TV, man. You know, there's a cat. I think he a former ref or whatnot. He was on there, too, man. He was talking shit. So, after the uh, after the game was over, but it was, did it pop in by a song. You know what I'm saying? So, he tried to he tried Dominique on some whole shit. And, you know, hey, Dominique got in that ass, dog. Like, bitch, I beat your motherfucking ass in here. What the fuck you did? Fuck these cameras. And that's what happened, dog. You know what I'm saying? He beat that motherfucking nigga head. You know what I'm saying? And everybody caught him on, on TV. And, and he, they pulled him off him. He was taking the jacket off and club like, bitch, I beat your ass again. Like, what's up? You know what I'm saying?
But that shit was funny, man. Old gangster, man. Your boy's like, hey, fuck this money. We grown ass men. You tried me on some bullshit. I put my foot in your ass. You feel me? So, shout out to dumb nigga, man. That's why you handle your business. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and Buddy got his ass whooped and he went to jail, dog. Because he started the shit, man. But, you know, you know how motherfuckers be, man. One, one thing, you know what I'm saying? This cat on TV, you know. So, I'm a try. And, uh, dumb nigga said he went with that shit. You feel me? Whoa. That's why that number 21 is up in the rafters up there. There you go. There you go. Two chains for the money ball. Bang. Yep. Good job. All right. You know what we're going to do? We both winners here. So we're going to treat everybody to the game and... Uh, a so future, a future I, I Hawks. Know he's mad. He's a little upset right now. Well, that's but that's okay. College Park we pride. Play my game. We need to play like horse or out. You can't set up the racks. You can't be here an hour before me. Set up the racks where you know your field goal range is higher because we know you shoot from that side. We've seen it for 30 years. And you want me to come in straight out the van and shoot from there? I don't feel like that was fair for me. Right. right. Hey, you know yeah. what? Life is hard and sometimes fair. <laughs> This was a total setup. Okay. This is a total setup. I well, want to recount. I feel like Russia has something to do with this. <laughs> yeah, might have. Yeah, that, there you go. Here we are inside uh, Studio J in Atlanta. Ernie Johnson and Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley. Uh, Dominique Wilkins getting a statue. Dominique, this is a big night, big day, and we are so thrilled. I have been with you since UGA. And you're my pal, my buddy. Most importantly, you're my Hall of Fame friend. And today is the big 2-1 statue out front. I have been a Dominique Wilkins fan for, feels like forever. The days of the human highlight film, him winning slam dunk contests, getting robbed in Chicago when he should have won the slam dunk contest. He was the first true Atlanta sports icon for people of my generation. Since I've been here, he's always encouraged me, uh, helped me uh, to become a better player, and it's something that I've always appreciated. It's a privilege to have a, you know, one of the best players of all time to be able to, to be around us, and you can, you know, pick his brain from time to time. So I just want to say congratulations and, and, and a great job. I remember watching him dunk all over everybody when I was my son's age. That's how awesome it is that we are putting a statue up for this man now. So my son gets to see the man I got to see when I was his age. It is. It is about us. It's about we. Even when, with the statue, it's about us. You know, it's what we've done together. This statue represents more than just me. It represents the history of Atlanta basketball. Finally, you know, taking its rightful place, you know, amongst, you know, basketball uh, elites. Uh, wow. What? Ernie, I just got to say this. When I was a little kid, I was ride, driving around on my big wheel, and then this guy made, they called him a human highlight film. Some of the dunks and plays he made. So he's not older than, you're not older than him. I'm telling you. I mean, he's not older than you. I, I was a little kid. No. You're older than him. No, you're older than him, big well, dummy. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not, oh, you weren't on your big wheel. Yeah, exactly. I, I was on my big wheel. No, the guy just talk about the human highlight figure. Yeah, exactly. I, I was on my, so we could talk to. I was on my big wheel, and he even had this incredible dunk against the Philadelphia 76ers, and I wrecked my big wheel. That is an absolutely great story. Uh, <laughs> I remember. <What? laughs> Go ahead, Shaq. You know, Dominic Did was, you have a big wheel? No, I didn't have a big wheel. Couldn't afford one. Dominique was uh, sort of like a mentor to me. Uh, you know, one time we was playing in a game and I was just trying to outscore him. And, you know, he basically taught me how to, you know, not wear myself out in the first quarter. He said, Shaq, you, how much you want to average? I told him at least 30. So he said, break it down seven points a quarter, get everybody involved. But That's you know, only 28 just always, for the record. Yeah, and then I hit two free throws to help me win four championships, something you know nothing about. <laughs> so it all, anyway. Here, here we are to talk about Dominique. Let me finish. All, I'm trying. Let me finish. So, uh, you know. I'm happy for Dominique. You know, he was always a great player, but he was always one of those guys that were caught behind Mike. You know, Mike just got so much fanfare and so much play, like he really didn't get a lot of recognition. But I remember Dominique when he had the S curl and he used to wear the leather and 
he's a great guy. So congratulations, Dominique. Thank used to love him. used to love watching Dominique and Michael in their at their prime. At their those prime. Show, on TBS. Remember those matchups on TBS? Used to, matchups they used to, on TBS? Have, used to wa- go down oh, to the Omni. Dominique used should to go down to the Omni and watch. He should play actually have there. two more slam dunk championships. In fairness, in fairness, but you know, I'm going to bring it a little bit home, Ernie. And and were you? When you played in Atlanta, I, play, I was teammates you, with Dominique. Did you ever pass to Dominique? Oh, without question. Did you ever get it back? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Dominique, good. Dominique was. Ernie, right, that was a cheap shot. No, no. Oh. That was a cheap <laughs> shot. <laughs> that, no, Dominique, I'm sorry, Ernie took a cheap shot at hey, you. Hey, Dominique, I'm going to bring it home, and I'm going to not. I'm not going to talk about like Ernie was trying to say you didn't pass. I'm not going to say like Shaq said that you were in a shadow. I'm not going to say what Chuck said that he when he was 18 on a big wheel. <laughs> I'm going to say that you are not only one of the top 50 basketball players that ever played, you are one of the top 50 people that I've ever met. Congratulations, Dominique. This is a wonderful honor, and it's something you you really deserve. Congratulations, Neek. Um, Well deserved, much deserved. He brought pride to this building and to the Omni before it. Congratulations, Neek. Five, four, three, two. My whole life, you know, I grew up, you know, watching the Hawks, watching you. I remember back then, you know, just them giving me those Hawks jerseys with your number on the back, and we standing in front of your statue. It's just like, man, this is this is an awesome feeling, you know, to be standing next to. You know, the guy who basically just made basketball fun for a lot of us in Atlanta. Man, I'm so proud of you getting this statue, man. Well deserved, you're a legend. I remember we played basketball back, back, way, way back in the backyard, and I taught you how to jump. I taught you how to slam. I taught you how to do all those things you did as a pro, and then you got into the Hall of Fame. You didn't mention my name, but that's okay, because I still love you, you. I still love you. I'm here to celebrate your day today. God bless you, man. Now, all serious people. You're the best, man. You, you, you made the game what it is. You, uh, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, you up there with all those guys, man. You're the cream of the crop, and we love you here in Atlanta, man. God bless you. You deserve this. If, 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 if when people think of Atlanta Hawks, Atlanta Hawks, we're still 20 years probably removed. We only think of Dominique Wilkins. We don't think of anyone else. For more than a decade, Dominique Wilkins was the unofficial ambassador of Atlanta, Georgia. He meant a lot to Atlanta. He was basically the man, you know, just like Ted Turner, the man here in Atlanta. He was the man here. No matter how well this Hawks team is doing this year, there's a single face that always comes up, and it's Dominique Wilkins. And that's from your man, Easter. I mean, it wasn't all about dunks, because I tell people all the time, it's very difficult to get over 26,000 points on dunks. No doubt. I, and I tried to tell Kenny Smith that, which the last three years he hadn't believed it. And I'm like, <laughs> Kenny, I can shoot the ball, buddy. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, that was well said. And, was. and for all of us. Dominique, Dom- Dominique, Dominique Wilkins, man, well congratulations. Deserved. Well deserved. Congratulations. Chuck, you got a statue? Of course you don't. You're not that good. <laughs> congratulations, Dominique. Dominique is just like his nickname, the human highlight film. It, it is truly that and guys that maybe did not see him play life it was unreal it started in, in warm-ups you know we'd be warming up and you look over there and you know he's looking down in the basket in warm-ups I mean when he went up to to dunk the ball I never seen so much power uh, in a guy six eight I just remember sometimes looking up sometimes and you, and you think you're getting ready to jump and here Dominique comes out from nowhere uh, and he got your, you know, got his knee in your face. You know what I mean? The guy can could, could really jump, and not only just jump, he really had a game. You always hear dun 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 dun, because you knew somebody was going to be getting dunked on or doing something like that, and you knew Dominique was going to be in there, especially if Atlanta had played that night. Uh, the way he just, <clears throat> I mean, you, look, you didn't want to be on on those uh, highlights. You know, when people turn on the TV, they, they were hoping to see, you know, a Michael Jordan highlight, a Dominic Wilkins highlight. It's so fitting for, for, uh, for Atlanta to be having a statue out for him uh, because he's so Atlanta. That's him, that's, that's his city. He put Atlanta on the map, you know, the Hawks are Dominic Wilkins. So having a statue that symbolized what he brought to that organization, what he meant to that community and that city is well deserved.
you not only were a tremendous basketball player, but a great person, and I'm proud to have known you and been a part of the Hawks franchise with you. So, again, congratulations. Couldn't be happier for him uh, with the statue. I think it's well-deserved. He's done a lot for that organization, the city of Atlanta, uh, and now he's uh, getting his due. Congratulations on being honored with the statue. I'm pretty sure it wasn't made with you in a defensive stance. Seriously, I enjoyed playing against you. You competed, you were a winner, and you still are a winner. This recognition is well-deserved. Congrats on the honor, well-deserved. Um, just uh, proud to have played against you, and uh, God, if you had just only had a left hand. Class act off the floor, and I just want to say congratulations, and no one deserves it more than you. Thank you for all the highlights, and thank you for all the accolades that you accomplished. Wish you nothing but the best. God bless, buddy. It's tough to walk. It's still tough to walk away. I watch games and I'm like, man, what is this guy doing? He was depressed. With him not having a goal, he was just lost. To the fans of Atlanta, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you more than you ever know. And I appreciate all the support over these years. What do you want to say to Atlanta? What do you want to say to the fans that have supported you and been there from day one? And I know you have a lot of relationships in town that say, right. hey, this is finally coming to fruition. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. I was talking to someone earlier, you know, about Josh Smith and the comments after last night's game about fans being fickled here. Um, I've never seen that. They've never treated me that way. Even when I got traded and I came back was the biggest reception I ever gotten in my life. And these fans here made me who I am. I mean, I love Atlanta. I love the fans here. I don't think anybody, I know there's nobody to love the Hawks more than me. And the reason why I stayed as long as I stay is because of the fans here in Atlanta. They mean more to me than you could ever imagine. A Hall of Famer, number 21, the human highlight film, Dominique Wilkins. I love you guys. I 
love you guys. And I heard something the other day that Atlanta fans were kind of fickle. Right. Well, I'm here to tell you, I've never seen that. Because you guys have stood on the wall, you've made the human highlight film your favorite son. And even though I'm not from Atlanta, I'm from Atlanta. And now I can say I'm a hawk forever because you guys have immortalized me with that statue out front. And that statue represents change. It represents history that we can finally support and just add on to that. Continue to build the rich basketball tradition we have here in Atlanta. And that statue is a landmark to that change. And I, I can't tell you in words how much I love this city, love these fans, and I'm never leaving this city. So, in closing, to the greatest fans I feel in the NBA that supported me, I love you all, and this is the ATL, and we do play basketball in this city, and this team is represented of that. So you keep rooting for our team. Let's go ATL. Thank you. Dominic Wilkins. Thanks to the Hall of Fame for inducted me and all the fans around the world who's been a part of our lives here. And I would like to give a special thanks to the city of Atlanta because, you know, you guys made me feel like I'm your native son and I love you forever. Thank you.